What's going on everyone, your friendly neighborhood camera buddy Yak here. And if you watched my last video, you know that while I was trying to record that video, my A7R3's microphone port actually broke on me. <laughs> so after doing a lot of research on it, apparently this is like somewhat of a common issue. I was not aware of this until it just happened to me also, which is kind of scary because there's a lot of videos out there, you know, people talking about the same thing happened to them. And if you look at the comment section, there's a bunch of other people that are also talking about the same thing happening to them. And the timing of it seems to like change from person to person. You know, some people are like, oh, it broke after like a couple of months. But in my personal experience, you know, this just happened out of nowhere after two and a half years of using this camera. I mean, like I don't even use the microphone port that much on this camera, but somehow it still broke on this camera. So this is a pretty big issue, especially if it's like a widespread issue where, you know, it's if it's like something like the Xbox 360, you know, if you're aware of that, you know, with that gaming system, it's like pretty much all of them are doomed to get the red light of death and then break eventually. And that might be the case with the Sony A7R 3 or A7 III cameras where the microphone port on them are just eventually going to break. And as you can see, like when this f decides to focus, like there's nothing wrong with my port, you know, I never dropped it, it got water in it or anything. It just chose to stop working. So I can't get any you know, professional audio of using my external microphones, like this like Rode mic that I got right here. I can never use this on this camera again. Or um, the thing that actually really bothered me was the, the Rode mic Go microphones, these, um, these tiny little microphones that you can use. I love these things. I don't really like using them for professional stuff that much because they are kind of unreliable. But for just shooting like YouTube videos like these, like these are amazing for that stuff. But I can't use it on this camera until I get a fix or I fix it myself. And from the videos I've seen of people fixing it, this seems very complicated to like try to fix it. So I'm not going to bother with that because I don't want to like destroy the sensor or anything. And if I want to get a fix, my if I want to send it out to get a fix, it's going to cost me around $300. I talked to one company about it, but it's like I have to like send it out to California. I live in New York. And then it's the camera is gonna be gone for like a week, and and this is my main you know photography camera, so I don't want to get rid of it because I have like some photo shoots coming up you know in the next in the next week or so, so I don't want to like you know not have my camera with me. So this is pretty scary, but thankfully I did figure out of a a workaround for this issue and. It's not perfect, but you know it, it's, it allows you to still get audio with it. So, so how it works is that you know with the Sony A7 III and a lot of these newer Sony cameras, they have two different ways of getting audio from them. You know, you of course have your 3.5 millimeter jack right here. That's you know how you usually do it, which obviously is broken on this camera, so we can't do do it. But there's also the hot shoe on this camera that you can actually get audio accessories for it and be able to use them. So for example, besides using this Rode mic, which I don't really care that much about, now we can use something like this, which is the Sony's. Um, so these all have like really weird names for some reason, but it's this thing right here. Here, don't focus on my face. Focus on it. There we go. This thing right here, Sony ECM GZ One M, and this thing um, just connects on the top of the camera right here. So we can just connect this right here. And the thing about like putting it up here, it's like it's like it's like so hard to like fit them. They're like all of them are super tight for some reason. It just feels like you're like breaking the camera. But when you do it, you do get decent sounding audio from here. Here, we'll test it out right now. Okay, so this is actually a re recording because the interesting thing about these microphones that you put on top is that if you are already recording and you put it on, then you just get no audio with it. You actually have to restart your recording to get the microphones to work. And there's actually a switch on here for um, zoom in gun i have it on gun right now and as you can see uh, even though i'm changing it it's not making any adjustments because i'm recording right now but if i stop recording then i can change between the modes like right now i'm shooting on gun mode i'm gonna stop recording and now i'm recording in the zoom audio and we'll see which one ever sounds better i'm gonna do another video where i'm gonna be comparing all the different audios and see how they sound 
But now let's go back into the past. But this is not a bad option. You know, if you're a vlogger or anything, you know, this is, you get decent audio. You don't have to worry about batteries or anything. And also, it just goes directly, so you don't have to worry about cable. So it is actually a nice option. But the thing that bothered me the most was that I wasn't going to be able to use my Rode mic laps. Because that's the main reason that I use a 3.5mm jack is that, you know, sometimes I'm shooting like a documentary style video where I'll have someone, you know, mic'd up and they'll be walking around like New York City or something. In those situations, I don't want to be using an external audio recorder for that stuff, so... But I did figure out a workaround, which is kind of expensive, which is to use something like this, which is, this is the um, Sony's UWP D11 microphone system. And this thing I already had, I think if you buy it brand new, it's around five to $600. But I got this on, um, I think I got it on Black Friday for like two or $300. So there was a big sale on this and that's when I like snatched these up. And thankfully I did, cause you can buy a $60 adapter from Sony with these things. And that way you can just attach these directly onto the camera without any wires. And these things usually use double A's to like power them up. And this way you don't have to, you know, use any batteries with them. It just gets direct power from the camera. So let's put that on right now, but these things are not perfect, and I'll show you guys why. Okay, and then you just plug it in here, and boom. This is what it looks like, no cables hanging out off of it or anything. It's a really cool setup, but there is a problem with it. So let's turn it on. It's extremely loud right now. It's, even if I'm like whispering, it's still like capturing like cause the problem is that the, the bass noise levels are like incredibly high. And the thing about the camera is that it disables any of the audio controls, so you cannot lower the, the bass audio level, so there's just a lot of static, and then the volume is way too high. So you can go into the audio settings of your microphone. So right here, you can go to the settings, it's at zero dB right now. And for some reason, you have to increase the dB to like reduce it. So you hold, um, you hold set and then you just increase this to like lower your volume, which is again, really odd. But once I have it at 21 dB, it seems to be at these, actually let me lower it to like 18. 18 seems to be like a decent range. It's still pretty loud. I'm, I'm actually going to keep it at 21 so it doesn't peak, but that's how it's, this is how it sounds now at 21 dB. This is what it sounds like. It's still kind of loud. Honestly, I might even reduce it more. But this is what the audio sounds like at 21 dB. It's pretty loud. And there's probably a lot of noise happening right now. I can't really... I'm not monitoring right now, so I'm not... You know, I can't really hear it. But this is what it sounds like. And here's how it sounds after you put it into Premiere and you add some noise reduction. After the noise reduction, it sounds pretty good in my opinion. So it's not the biggest deal in the world but you do have to do noise reduction because for some reason it does introduce a lot of noise if you just do audio through the through the thing itself but now here's the interesting thing is that if you just while you have it up like this if you use a 3.5 millimeter audio thing and you plug it somewhere else then you get perfectly clean audio so <laughs> i don't know i don't know this is very flawed i don't know why sony just doesn't let you lower the audio levels from the camera. I don't know why it disables it. You know, if it didn't disable it, then there wouldn't be any problem. But for some reason it does. And the funny thing is that it, it does the same thing if you put this thing onto like a Sony FS5 that I'm shooting with right here. Then it does the same thing where it's way too loud and you hear a lot of sta static. But it doesn't, in, on the FS5 there's dials to like reduce the volume. So you can just reduce the volume there and it sounds perfectly fine. So for a cinema camera, like if you get the FS5, FS7, or FX6 that recently came out, then it should be fine. You know, it's I think it's a good way to use it without having to, you know, plug in XLR cables and everything. But I don't know, it's it's it it is messy. So I'm probably gonna end up like getting this the audio um the microphone port on this camera getting fixed eventually. Now the next video I'm gonna make is gonna be I'm gonna be testing out these audio both of these things, both this thing and um, 
I don't even know where I put it, it's so small, but I'm gonna be using this thing also to see what kind of audio I can get with it, but that's gonna be the next video. This is just a video to show you guys there's alternative ways. Also, there's like other accessories that you can get. For example, there is a better version of this, like this one I got for $100, Well, there's one version that's like $300 and it's a better shotgun mic, but personally, I think that's too much money and I don't really care about shotgun mics that much anyways. Like this is something I, I use pretty much just as like a better scratch audio. So personally, I don't really care about that product that much. But there is a $600 one item that you can get that you attach it on top of your camera. I'll have a picture of it up right now. And that one gives you two XLR ports and a 3.5 millimeter jack. And also the $600 version is a bundle, so it comes with a shotgun mic on it anyways. So I would recommend you get that if you can afford it. That way you get your 3.5 millimeter jack also. And you also get two XLR ports also, so you can use you know professional audio like this one right here. But anyways guys, that's gonna be it for this video. If you're interested in these microphones, definitely check out my next video where I'm gonna be doing tests with them. And I'm also gonna show you guys what it sounds like without the hissing when, it, when I just recorded through an external recorder like Zoom right here. But anyways guys, thanks for watching. Hope this video helped and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.